Happy New Year! No, I'm not late, you're all early. This is the Lunar New Year, also known as Chinese New Year. This is the year of the rat. Now I could tell you all about the Chinese Zodiac and why it's the year of the rat, but I'm gonna save that for a later video. Instead, we're gonna talk about someone who appears a lot in Chinese mythology, but he's not really talked about much here on the mythology community on YouTube. That person is the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor is a top dog of Chinese religion. Now before we continue, I should probably tell you a little bit about the Chinese religion. Chinese religion isn't the same kind of religion that we have here in the West. In China, religion and philosophy are often intertwined, and they coexist pretty easily. You probably know that Buddhism is the biggest religion in China, but what you might not know is that Buddhism isn't native to China, it comes from India. So what was in China before Buddhism? Well, it has no official name, but it's more commonly known as the Chinese folk religion. It's a collection of beliefs held by Chinese across the ancient country. Generally, these religions all believed in multiple gods and had some form of ancestral worship. That's a common theme throughout all of Chinese religion. That's all I'm going to say about China's religion, because China is just so massive in every single way, and it's so overwhelming that I can't do the religion justice by summarizing it in a paragraph. Plus, this video isn't about the Chinese religion. It's about the Jade Emperor. Now let's talk about him. The Jade Emperor rules over heaven and every other god in the Chinese pantheon. But he wasn't always on top, though. The Jade Emperor started as an assistant of all things. During his intern days, he was known as Yuhang Shangdi, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And he served the previous ruler slash creator of not only heaven, but everything. Yuanshi Tianzong. Please note this is only one creator deity, there are many creation stories all across China. Eventually, Yu Hang Shangdi worked his way up the ladder, and he became the new leader of everything in existence, the Jade Emperor. He rules over heaven mostly, but he also has some dominion over earth. It's just limited because of how far earth is from heaven. Nevertheless, he still rules them both, and he sends gods down to check on humans every once in a while. This is what the Chinese New Year is all about, a god coming down to check on the new people. The Jade Emperor sends god Zhao Jun to inspect every mortal's home and their piety. If the people and their home pass inspection, then the Jade Emperor will reward them accordingly. If they fail inspection, then they are going to be punished. What is the judging criteria for this, you may ask? Well, incense is lit and food is left out for the Jade Emperor, so when Zhao Jun arrives, he can check off everything and that the house is doing their duty to the Emperor. Wait a minute, he rewards people for being good, punishes them if they're bad, and you leave food out for him? Why does this sound so familiar? The Jade Emperor is in charge of everything. Heaven, Earth, the other gods, everything. Being in charge of everything is a big job, and that's why he has a lot of advisors to help him manage everything. The Jade Emperor has many advisors, just like how the Earthly Emperor had many advisors. There are actually a few parallels between China's Emperor and the Jade Emperor. The Jade Emperor was something that the Earthly Emperors would aspire to be like. They wanted to be just like him. The Jade Emperor was also the one in charge of the ruling dynasty in China. He would issue the Mandate of Heaven. The Mandate of Heaven was a belief that originated during the Zhao period. The belief is that the Jade Emperor decides whether or not a ruling dynasty has the right to rule. The Jade Emperor can take away the right from any dynasty, and they will fall shortly before being replaced by a new dynasty. The Mandate of Heaven has a big influence on China, and it even inspired this phrase from the Tale of the Three Kingdoms. The Empire, long divided, must unite. Long united, must divide. Thus it has ever been. It's a cyclical pattern which summarizes all of Chinese history. It's the religious explanation for China constantly uniting and dividing and uniting again. The Jade Emperor's life isn't all business and bureaucratic advisors though, so don't feel bad for him. He has a wife who, get this, is named the Jade Empress. They also have a lot of children, way too many to list, but I'll give you one of the more notable ones. The Jade Emperor had a daughter named Zhi Nu, and she was in charge of weaving colorful clouds into the sky. So you know all those nice looking sunset photos? Yeah, that's her art, and she's been doing free commissions for humanity for centuries. There's a story about her too. One day, Jinyu decided to go down to earth and bathe in a river. While she was bathing, a cowherder named Niu Lang stumbled upon her and instantly became attracted to her. 
He saw she left some robes on a bush nearby, so he stole them and took them back to his home. When she got out of the river, she saw her heavenly robes were gone, which meant she couldn't return home. Niu Lang came back to the river and took Zhu Nu back to his home. Some time passes and then the Jade Emperor is naturally wondering where his daughter is. He looks down to earth and sees her living with this man who essentially kidnapped her. Naturally, he's furious, but he doesn't intervene because they got married. I guess he doesn't want to ruin his daughter's forced marriage? I don't know. Personally, I think it'd be okay to intervene, because this is a case of kidnapping and Stockholm Syndrome. But the ancient world is a man's world. Anyway, Ji Nu got homesick, and one day she's snooping around her husband's room. She finds a box and opens it to reveal her old heavenly robes. She puts them on and returns to heaven to reunite with her family. The Jade Emperor then creates a large river between heaven and earth, so his daughter can never return to her kidnapper. She is saddened by this and then begs her father to let her return. Classic case of Stockholm Syndrome. The Jade Emperor eventually agrees to let them meet on a bridge over the river once a year. This is the origin for the Chinese equivalent of Valentine's Day. It's a day when young lovers celebrate being with each other. There are other stories that involve the Jade Emperor. He is the one who hosted the Zodiac Race, and according to another story, he is the one who sculpted humans from clay, but he left us out to dry too long and that's why some of us have deformities and sickness. He even shows up in Journey to the West a few times. There's also one story which states he started as a human who became a god. And this isn't too crazy because there are other gods in Chinese mythology who started as humans. Take Guan Yu for example. He started as an extraordinary soldier who was elevated to a god upon his death. In my opinion, it's not too crazy to think this happened with the Jade Emperor too. Plus, it makes for one crazy underdog story. Starting as a mortal human who worked his way up the divine hierarchy to become supreme ruler of everything. One more thing about the Emperor. Remember how he said he got the job from the former ruler of heaven? Well, the Jade Emperor will eventually give up his throne to another god too, and he's already chosen who it will be. He's known only as the Master of the Dawn of the Jade of the Golden Door. Quite a mouthful, I know. We don't know when this will happen, but it'll happen eventually. It's kind of like Ragnarok, or the Book of Revelations. We know it's supposed to happen in the future, we just don't know when in the future. So yeah, that's the Jade Emperor, China's supreme deity. Fun fact, his birthday is actually nine days after Chinese New Year. You might be wondering, Mythology Guy, why didn't you just post this on his birthday then? Well, for one, I wanted to showcase something about China on Chinese New Year's. So, why not talking about their top dog deity? Plus, I already have a video planned for February. And it's one I've wanted to do since the start of this channel. So yeah, stay tuned for that video next month. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see more, and have a good one.